Okay, so yesterday, the documentary of The Malice at the Palace was released. And I'm going to do a quick review of it. Because I think it's very important to a lot of Pacers fans. I know me personally, because I'm seeing a lot of people finally recognize that 2004-2005 team for what it was. They could have won a championship that year. And not enough people talk about it. And I like that people, uh, people from other fan bases are talking about it. And it's very good. Uh, but So it starts out, and basically they go in-depth on how the different players get there, you know. They taught first they start off with Jermaine O'Neal starting from high school all the way to uh when he got to the Pacers. Um and they highlight his struggles in Portland, which I think was a really good thing cuz that's something you need to know cuz that's how the Pacers got him was his his price at the time was very low because he had been struggling in Portland. And so we got him and kind of talk about Reggie Miller and they talk about we're on our test getting traded here, and they talk about us getting Steven Jackson, and they just they talk about the building of this uh, of this team and how it builds up to where it gets to, where we are competing for a championship, and then after that they talk about the season before, well actually they talk about the 2001 season a bit where we lost to the Lakers, but they talk about the 2004 season where we lost to the Pistons and we almost got to the finals and then we get to 2005 well, I guess it was, it was November of 2004 but they talk about that and they talk about like the start of the game and everything leading up to the malice of the palace and then you get to it and like Ron Artest said, they go frame by frame by frame, and they look at everything, and they ask all the players about it. They interviewed the dude who squared up with Ron Artest. That dude's an a-hole. I think he's stupid. You square up with Ron Artest and expect to not get hit. That is, That thought process is retarded. It, it, it's, it, there's no other way to put it. It is retarded in every possible way and they talk about him they talk about the person who threw a chair of course they talk about the guy who threw the bottle um that guy is also an a-hole i don't like him because if he didn't throw that bottle ron artest would not have gone into the stands and that whole thing wouldn't have happened and also another thing is ben wallace He's the one who started the fighting. He started pushing and shoving Ron, and Ron was trying to calm down and go off. And that's why he laid on the scores table. He, he was trying to sit down and just relax and calm down. And then, yeah, that happened. And so you go by that. They interview some of the police officers that were working then. Um, they talk about kind of what the media thought about it, which you could tell that some of the media people that were talking about it from just, like, general news stations, you know, ones that aren't dedicated to sports, you could tell that those reporters had not watched any basketball, possibly never watched any sports in their lives, as they were calling them, like, gazillion-dollar athletes, and I'm like, they don't get paid as much as you think they're getting paid. They're still making millions of dollars, but I don't think it's quite as much as you think they make. And the one that said they, they never have to follow rules, they have to follow rules every time they step on a basketball court. Now, when they break, they do break some of the rules. Because this is a Pacers team that is very physical and does break a lot of rules on defense, but they still have to constantly follow rules on a basketball court, and they do for the most part. So that statement is idiotic. Um, and just when they say that they're thugs, that's wrong. That's wrong. I know some people will say that's a race thing. I don't think it's a race thing. I think it's more an appearance thing because you can call a white person a thug. There are, are white guys who try to act thug. 
and people will call them like fake thugs and stuff like that. If it was a race thing, wouldn't they be calling them fake? Whatever, whatever, whatever. But that's the media taking a word and taking it to the extreme and trying to associate it with a certain people, which is wrong. That is terrible. And they talk about that and dress code, kind of get started from that and all, all that stuff. And they do interview uh, Donnie Walsh um, about it. And then they kind of talk, after they get through the mouths of the palace and the immediate stuff after, they talk about Reggie Miller's last game. And him never getting a championship. You know, this I'm talking about a very boiled down version. Um, and then they talk about the guy's, you know, careers after the malice at the palace. And yeah. I think it does a very good job of portraying what happened. Finally, the Pistons side of it, um, the fans and the players on the Pistons side are getting some of the, the blame that they should have because they're the ones that instigated it. That whole time, they're the ones that instigated it. Now, I'm not saying the Pacers never did anything wrong. Ron Artest shouldn't have gone up in the stands, but the Pistons fans shouldn't have agitated him to make him go up in the stands. So... It's it's nice to see the blame finally getting put on the right people. Um, also, the part where they show David Stern. And he makes the decision. I did not know that he made the suspension decisions off of an edited version of the tape. That is terrible. And that is probably why so few Pistons players got suspensions. When there were Pistons players who went up in the stands. And Rasheed Wallace, I mean, Ben Wallace got the worst suspension on the Pistons team, and that was six games. But, and then when David Stern says the vote to suspend the Pacers players was unanimous, one to zero, I think that's a perfect rep representation of every decision David Stern ever made. Now, while he was still a, a, a good commissioner, I do think the way he handled some things was terrible and this was one of those examples where he consulted nobody but himself he never talked to any players any coaches any any of the team uh owners he never talked to anybody else it was just him by himself in a room making that decision and that's not how you make decisions that is the wrong way to go about something like this you get a group of people you get a committee together and you all talk about it because if you get outside opinions you're um, actions of how you punish people will be a bit more justified because you'll get the full story instead of watching an edited version of the tape. So, <clears throat> that's terrible. But yeah, overall, I think that this movie or this documentary was a very good documentary. It was, it was very, very good. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm going to watch it again today. That's just how much I enjoyed it. And I'm just glad that we're, we're getting some stuff cleared up. And blame is getting put on the right people. And people are finally starting to acknowledge that the Pacers had a chance to get a championship that year. Because you don't hear about it that much from people. So, you can point out multiple times in Pacers history where we should have won a championship and we didn't. Or we should have at least gone to the finals and didn't. And... Um, uh, I do think times like that should be recognized a bit more. So, I will see you guys next time. As always, I'm not funny, and I will say that when they started talking about Reggie Miller's last game, when Reggie Miller started to cry, I started to cry a bit. I'm, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I cried. Just a bit. Because it was Reggie Miller talking about his last game and never getting a championship when he worked 
so hard and put so much effort in and never got any any championship that that's one of the great injustices on this planet I'll see you guys next time there's the 2-2 oh and he went too far <laughs>